What up, everyone? Welcome. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. We're going to be attempting to do a solo playthrough of uh, Kickstarter's favorite board game darling, uh, The Seventh Continent. It is a, well, uh, an exploration game, kind of like a choose your own adventure book, but with cards and stuff. I'll show you what I mean when I get started. Um, I have literally everything you could have for this game. Uh, this box right here probably contains close to a thousand hours of uh, content. This one here has a, roughly about the same cards. And um, as simply put, um, what we're going to be exploring is an island. Um, so the basic gist of the game is we have a curse. We have to come to an island to basically rid ourselves of the curse. Um, and to do that, we have to explore it. However, um, the cards are about this big. I don't have a lot of space here on this desk. So they have a mechanic for removing cards uh, from the desk. Um, so we're going to be using that a lot. But essentially, if you were to take all of the cards out and they believe there's like maybe 500 landscape cards in the base box, um, you would have roughly a five meter squared island um, that you move around and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of fascinating. And basically, it has a very visual component because, it's you know, it's a board game. Um, and the visual component means if you take a look at a card and you spy like a berry tree or berry bush, I guess you should say, on the card, um, what will happen is if you have an ability, like a botany skill or anything like that, you can actually use that berry tree for things, for to get things out of it and whatnot. Same thing goes for crafting materials and all that sort of stuff. So... While it is an exp exploration game, it is also a survival game. We will be hunting animals in, in an attempt to not die. Um, I've played maybe five hours of this one. Uh, we're, we're not going to get to this one today. Um, we played five hours of this one with my wife. It's a lot of fun, but uh, my wife doesn't have the stamina that I do when it comes to playing board games. So it makes it a little hard to continue the story when I'm waiting for someone who's not really interested in playing with me, which is why I'm doing it on the stream. Uh, so this, this one here actually adds another element. So this one is a five by five meter, roughly. I don't actually know the actual dimensions. I'm just going to say it's five meters because it's visually impressive to think about. This one adds a layer above. So you'll be flying on a balloon uh, in the sky and a layer below, which is going through tunnels under the ground and stuff. So, but we're just, Going to ignore this box for now mostly because um the game has curses in there and the curses mm. oops, excuse me <laughs> the curses of the game actually um you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna make some room for me here because i don't have a lot of room on my desk so i'm just gonna bring this extra chair real close whoa yikes that sucked mm. one second Okay, so, um, yeah, we're going to be basically diving into the box a lot, and, um, yeah, lots and lots of stuff to go through. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little magnifying glass that the game comes with so that we can spy on things, keep the manual to the side, just in case raw goblining comes up, and uh, we're going to start with... This, this comes in the expansion, um, which is the white box. Uh, this is essentially um, the... Uh, so the original game, basically, you had to pile up all your skills that you had underneath the satchel bag. But in this one, you actually get this cool little nice leather 
thingy my bob so uh we're gonna be playing uh one player today which means that we have to first pick a character which we're going to do but i'm gonna basically just show off a little bit of the visual components so uh the basic bitch game comes with these I guess cardboard components, but because your boy is a bit of a your whore, um, I got the Kickstarter version. It comes with these sweet little boys, little little figurinos. Um, but we'll we'll get to that in a sec. We're just gonna we're gonna make a decision on who we're playing first, though. So okay. Uh, these are the curse cards. So the curse we're going to be playing, which is the curse that the game suggests you start with, is called the uh, Vocacious Goddess. Voracious, sorry. Spelling, reading. It's called the Voracious Goddess. Um, so it's basically like the biggest and introduction campaign. Um, to put it in perspective, there's like the Bloody Hunt. Uh, there is the Offering of the Guardians. There's the Dark Chest of the Damned. And several other uh, expansion ones as well. And then there's also extra ones you can buy. I haven't. I'm not. I'm. I might buy them later. Who knows? But for now, several hundred hours of content is more than enough for me. So you're playing the uh, Voracious Goddess. So um, the game suggests before we get started to set the mood by reading this nice text so i'm going to read it for you now 1907 a renowned explorer you have just come back from the first expedition on the seventh continent a mysterious land that was recently discovered off the coast of antarctica and probably the very last terra incognita in the world you are recovering from your adventure when, whilst reading the daily newspaper, you realize that several other members of the expedition have disappeared suddenly, for unknown reasons. Coincidentally, you have been lethargic for a few days, feeling feverish and finding it difficult to get up from bed. Basically, like my real life, a cold shiver runs up and down your spine. You have to face the facts, and evil is consuming you from within. Man... You escalated that pretty quickly, huh? Um, at nightfall, you fall into a restless sleep without knowing that, for you, this is only the beginning. All right, so that sets the, the, sets the tone. Now, we get the distinct pleasure of actually reading. Um, so we'll take a look at this card here. Now, um, my, my, my setup is real fucking ghetto right now. It is so ghetto. If I could show you it, it, you would all laugh. But I've basically got like a weird basic bitch tripod right here, weighed down by a satchel bag with some shit in it. Ah, uh, so ghetto. But what I'm eventually going to have is I'm going to have the ability to show you the cards in greater detail via a green screen, which is coming tomorrow. And then I need to buy another camera and blah, 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 all that shit. And I might even change this camera right here that I'm pointing to. Boop, boop with a DSLR that I've got just laying around. I like mostly because it'll have better resolution down here. Anyway, doesn't matter for now. Um, but yeah, so the idea is, is that you need to take a look at these cards and they actually give you clues as to where you need to head in the island because the island has biomes and stuff like that. So remember this, boys. Remember this. Okay. <clears throat> Since you've returned from that expedition, the visions, uh, wait, the vision, okay, the vision of a strange gloomy idol that seems to be calling you has been haunting your nights. The piercing cries of a few seagulls pull you from a deep slumber. They sound so strange, as though they were laughing. You try your best to understand, where on earth are you? How did you end up in this place? Your memories are clouded. And you seem unable to remember. While shifting through your journal, you come across a handwritten sheet upon which something that looks like a rout was drawn, along with several other uh, several statues. As it so happens, one of the statues looked exactly like the idol from your restless dreams. Okay, 
uh, to begin adventure by putting a the number 10 card into play. Each player places their figures onto it. So again, uh, if you take a look at this, um, I'm going to be able to zoom in on that. Anyway, this is the map that we need to follow. It's real clean, a real, um, if, it, if it could just zoom in a bit, maybe. Can you, ah, uh, whatever, look. Um, oh, maybe I can change that. One second here. I know, I know this is sort of strange, but I might be able to make it so that it does that. Huh. Let's take a look here. Focus, auto. Is it going to focus for me? There we go. Look at that. Auto focus, baby. Yeah, so um, we need to follow this map. We start down the very bottom, and then we need to head all the way up and do all that dumb shit right there. So, and it says on the card. Oh, God. Even I can't read that. That's way too small. Where did I put that thing? So you can zoom in on shit using this magnifying glass here, but... I, for oh, fuck, I don't know. I can't read that. <laughs> That's way too small. There's some text up there. You see it? Anyway, yeah. Um, okay, so going back to where we need to be. There we go. Great. So that's that's the basic, the first clue that we get in this game. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to um, slap these bad boys in our little satchel here. Because that's, that's how we do, you hear? Uh, maybe like that. Look at that. It's amazing. All right, so we will put that like so. And we'll put that in the same one because fuck it. Why not? We're adults. Okay, so now we've got our little leather satchel thingy here with all the clues and shit that we'll have. So that's real cool. I like that. That's a that's a great addition considering how funky that was for the original game and stuff. So anywho. <clears throat> okay, so let's actually go through the setup phase now. Now that we've done all the cool things. Uh okay. Okay, setup. Each player chooses a character card, adds it to their hand. Remember to read the backstory on the back. Cool. All right. So let's take a look at some characters. Woo woo. Okay. So we have Keelin McCusta. Um, and she has, whenever you're able to use the card with the word botany, skill card. So you take a, uh, I'll just take a random skill card here. Um, so if you take a look down the very bottom there, focus. Focus. Yeah. Anyway, that says vigilance right there. Oh, there we go. Vigilance. So that's a skill word. Um, and basically, they, that's how you get um, certain things to trigger other things and stuff like that in the game. So whenever you have a car, use a card with the word key, keyword botany, you may discard one card from, with the keyword vigilance, which is what we just saw from your hand or inventory in order to use another card with keyword botany instead. It's not bad. Okay, then we have Dramichi uh, Gor Gorchov. Okay. I think he's like a boxer or something like that, maybe, in real life. Um, when you get a injury state, you may discard one card with the keyword aggressiveness from your hand or your inventory in order to ignore the effect of the blue icon. So I'll explain all of that when we actually get into a little detail, but um, further hand, oh my Jesus, uh, La Pirelli, butchering names is what I do best. You may discard one card with the keyword stealth from your hand or your inventory in order to skip the consequence step of an action you were involved in. If you do, all involved characters must immediately take that action again. 
Hmm. Howard P. Lovecraft. Yes, that's right. The Howard P. Lovecraft. Um, during your results step of an action you are involved in, you may discard one card with the keyword Serenity from your hand or inventory in order to apply the following effect. Each card revealed... Each revealed skull card is worth stars instead. Okay, that's pretty useful. Mary Kingsley, during the item step of an action you were involved in, you may discard one card with the keyword skill from your hand or inventory to apply the following effect. Um, that's not bad. The seven with the uh, stars are actually pretty useful. Victor Frankenstein. Uh, the maximum number of hand cards you may hold in your hand is increased by one. You may discard one card with the keyword will from your hand or inventory in order to choose one of your character specific hand cards and you discard a pile and add it to your hand. That, that's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. And the last one is Elliot Pen Pendleton. Um, during the result step of an action you're involved in, you may discard two cards with the keyword stamina from your hand and or inventory in order to apply the following effect. One star. So, um, I don't know. I don't know who to go with here. I think we might go with, uh, Keelan McCus McCuskey, uh, only because she has botany, um, And that might be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go with the lady. I think we'll go with the lady. Uh, okay, so her backstory, in case you all were wondering. Uh, the heiress, or the heiress of a wealthy manufacturer, Keelan, has always been passionate about herbs. Nice. And plants. Thanks to her botanical knowledge, she was able to survive by uh, being poisoned by an unmannerly husband ew, whose greed led him to the gallows. Freed from her married life, Keelan got involved in and partially funded the first expedition to the Seventh Continent. She plans to name the first carnivorous plant she discovers after her ex-husband. <laughs> oh, so mean. All right, so take the character card, put it in your butt. Okay, um, each player, and adds it to their hand. Okay, we've got our hand. Uh, each player takes a character figure and one fire figure. Right. So we'll take one of these. Which one is her? This one, I believe, with the little book. So, can you see it? Focus, bitch. Uh -huh. It's not going to focus. Whatever. Oop. I just dropped it. <laughs> Where'd you go? So my bold batch. That's okay. Uh, all right. Excellent. One lady. And we take a campfire icon as well. Which luckily is also... A 3D icon, which you can't see because it's super blurry, but it is what it is. Okay, setup is a bitch. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Okay. What's next then? Next, we place a special journal face up in front of one player. Optional, take the 777 card if you wish to play in easy mode, or a 650 card if you wish to play in hardcore mode. Um, I don't know if we'll... What is easy mode? Let's take a look here. 777. Mostly because I don't want to... It's very easy to die in this game. Rummaging through your satchel, you find a small wooden statuette at the bottom. Uh, if you lose the game, you may banish this card to apply the following effect. 
just as you're about to pass away, you suddenly hear a mocking laugh coming from nowhere and feel a wave of renewed energy flow through you, bringing back to life. The continent does not seem to be done with you yet. Oh, cool. So it's basically just like a get out of jail death card. All right, fuck it. Yeah, we'll, we'll play with that because I know how difficult this game can get. So we'll, we'll play with that. Okay. Uh, so we'll put that in the satchel, I think. With the rest of the cool shit. Easy mode unlocked. Oh. That's not meant to be there. Just skip the page. Okay. Hell yeah. Relic done. All right, next step. Uh, each player takes a number of dice based on the player count as shown on the Satchel and Journal card. Four in solo. Okay, so we take four of these little black dudes. Two. And these will... are not for rolling, they're just for... keeping track of how many uses you have of an item. Okay. Choose one or more clue cards and put them under the satchel or journal card. Return any clue cards you use. You may use several, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we only play with one uh, curse card at the moment because we're not... We're not fucking crazy. We're not stupid. I don't want to play like that. Uh, okay. Shuffle the following cards together from the action deck. The 35 skill cards that are common to all characters. Okay, put that back. All right, so skills. So it's worth pointing out, we have this, which is a nice little thing for keeping the discard pile together. And it has an extra skill right there as well. So yeah, yes. Okay, so shuffle together the following cards. Okay, the five skill card, uh, 35, so there should be one. Okay, 35, nice and easy. Um, <clears throat> the five skill cards that are specific to each character. Okay. okay. One, two, three, four, five. Neato. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. The curse cards associated with the clues. And uh, the four death cards titled The Curse Cards Associated with the Clues. Uh huh. Okay. So that would be this one, I guess. Yes. So we have to put this one in here as well. Okay. And okay. Nice. So now we just shuffle these together. Building the game. <sighs> uh, okay, no, that's separate. Nice folly, SFX folly though. Oh, screen tearing. Why is that happening? It's a webcam, it shouldn't be screen tearing. Whatever. The setup for this game. I'll tell you what. Okay. Uh huh. All 
Okay, uh, and then we put it nice and goody like that. Uh, okay, sort the exploration cards. We've done that. Uh, nah, 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 done that. Take the adventure cards. Take the take the adventure card indicated on the clue card you have chosen. Okay. Read the flavor text, which we did. Okay, so I believe it was number ten. Let me just confirm this now. Yes, number ten. All right, so this is where we're going to take away the box and actually set up the playfield. So say goodbye to all of those cards for now. And we're going to take number 10. And you always in this game do the following thing. So, okay, where do we put this? Oh, maybe we can put this in here. Yes, that is a good spot for it. We will put you in here with all the cool things. All right, so as a satchel we get five cards and we can have four items built yeah all right there's our little dudes we got a reference sheet here which we'll put over there for the time being don't need that that can go back in the box all right so now that we have everything oh wait let me just double check just to make sure uh-huh. Okay, great. We are ready to get started, I believe. So, um, starting off, we read this little adventure text here on the back of the card to set the scene. Um, where can I put this that it would make more sense? Does that look good? Yeah, that looks good. We'll do that. Okay. Thick columns of yellowish smoke rise up from the cracks in the volcanic rock. To the east, the peaks of a rocky cliff look down, mocking the ocean below. Okay, so this is the first scene that we have here. Now, um, there's a couple of things here. So you see those yellow thingies there? They represent places that we can move to. So um, we're going to put that there. I might need to move my webcam at some point. Uh, it might be safe to assume. Okay. And we can just, I reckon we can make it fit, make it work. That looks good. We'll keep it there. Okay. So. That's our beginning, and we start by putting our little lady there. And that's how we begin the game. So now we need to... Um, okay, so these ones here, they have an indicator of an eye. So that's the first area that we need to grab some stuff from. So we're going to take these two cards here and we'll place it down in those spots. And these represent areas that we can um, currently walk into if we wanted to. Like we can spend some action points um, to move about um, because every game has stuff that you can do and you can't do every single turn. So also there we go set the scene even more some nice ocean music i say ocean music but it's really just ocean <laughs> okay so every single turn uh... all right 
you can do the following things. Um, choose an active player. It'll always be me. What a surprise. And, um... So we'll do... We can have uh, the following actions. We can use the terrain card. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, okay. Take an action. Uh, so any of these white spaces here, they represent actions. So we'll just lift this up here so that everyone can see it. Uh, that little white space there. Come on, focus. Focus, you dingbat. I don't know why it doesn't focus. There we go. That little space there, it's got like a little doodle thingy on it. So that represents an action. Um, also, the spaces down here show how much it costs to move. So that's the action to move. Push you using one of the action deck. That represents the material that's in abundance in this area, so you don't have to do anything. And those numbers there represent the cards that you need to put up to the next one. So uh, the action that we're looking to do right there is check this handy dandy thing here. It is called go see slash investigate. Um, and all those actions are like listed here, basically. They're all pretty much the same thing. Um, sometimes when you, you might have an item in your inventory that can assist you with doing those types of actions, but that's really the only thing that's different about them. All right. So, um, we can, yeah, we can, we can do an action, which is this thing, or, uh, we can move, which is this action here. And to move, basically what we do is we decide where we want to go by using, well, I guess the first thing we have to do is actually, we have to, um, do the action that's on this card. Which is, if I could find it, Pathfinder slash Escape. So if we want to go here, we'll do an action for Pathfinding. Um, which will in result in us flipping this. And whatever's on the other side of this. And these remember, these two cards are always random. Um, and they come from a, a box. The box. And they have the one on there. So they're always going to be the same thing. Uh, from the same style of area. Um... We, we have to resolve whatever's on here first. So sometimes it might be a monster. Sometimes it might be a, um, like an event, like, I don't know, you slip and fall and you hurt yourself or whatever. Um, and that's pretty much what you do. And then when you've resolved this, you actually put, um, the, the green card, which is number here, which is 007 in its place. And then if you want to move, you do this move action down here. Sometimes it costs, like, extra movement, extra cards to move to another place. Um, so, I'll also explain this now. Um, doing an action. Down the bottom here, as you can see. If I could get it to zoom in. Perfect. Um, the blue box represents how many of the action deck you need to take. So, to move, it is always going to cost you one of the blue uh, action deck cards to do that. And that goes to a discard pile. That action deck represents how much life you have. Hunting and eating and all that sort of stuff will result in um, basically other things have uh, putting the discard pile back into the action deck. So it's, it's within the interest to not use that as much as possible if you want to live. Uh, the stars represent... Um, so what I'll do here is I'll just take um, a random card from the middle of this deck over here to show you what I mean. So, uh, basically, see on the side here, it has a star. If you manage to get a star, uh, then that's great. And what you can also do with cards, let's put another random one here, is you can actually join them together if you can. So, um, let's just keep going till we find one. Oh my god, come on, game. You're making me look bad. Okay. So it says um, two and a half star. Uh, this has two and a half stars because there's two halves here for stars. 
And yeah. And then when you've completed all of that, when you've done an action, you can take one of these cards and put it into your hand in order to build things or get skills or what have you. So we'll just slap them back in here at random points. Eh. Eh. Yeah, fuck it, whatever. That'll do. That'll do, pig, that'll do. All right. So, that's where we're at right now. And that's pretty much the explanation of the game. Um, as long as you can uh, meet the requirements for things, you'll be fine. That's pretty much how it goes. It's a very simple game to play. Um, but a lot of things happen in the exploration and stuff, so... Okay, so, now that we're finally set up and we're underway, let's get to doing cool things. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is, uh, we're going to see slash investigate over here, which means in order for us to pass the check, we simply need to use one of the blue cards. And, um, actually, it has this, like, uh, deck here. So, basically, this represents how many blue cards you need to pull in order to get the successes or the stars. Um, so, you know, it's... It gets worse and worse the more... Uh, the higher star count you need. But there are skills that you can get to fix that problem. So. Alright, so in order for us to get to this point here, I believe... Uh, if doing an action has a cost, we pay that cost and then we move on. I just want to make sure I'm doing it in the right order. This is a really nice book. It's very succinct. The manual is very thin for what is considerably a very large and expensive game. Okay, so the number of cards uh, to draw from the action deck is shown in blue diamond. Okay. Okay. The action, the active player draws number of action cards equal. The active player may draw additional action cards if they wish to boost their chances of succeeding. Unless it has a padlock icon, which it does not. Um, so I can draw, if I wanted to, I could draw five. But who would want to draw five? No one. Um... And, yeah, that's it. Uh, the result, mm -hmm. if a curse card is drawn, is revealed, and it has been drawn from the discard pile, uh, the game, if a curse card is revealed, and it has been drawn from the discard pile, while the action deck is empty, the game ends. So, there's like five curses in there, in that whole deck over here. Um, and if we draw one when we, so basically if you run out, then you start, you shuffle the discard pile and you start drawing from that. And if you draw a car, a curse card, then the game ends. So you don't want that to happen. Um, and then you can use before, well, as a, when the results calculated, then you can use a skill afterwards and basically you just modify after that. Um. Let's see. What else? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much all we need to know. Uh, there'll be some other things that come up when you're playing the game. Um, so. Yeah. Let's play. Alright, so. In order to succeed at the investigation, we need to draw one. Duda. Okay, it's the curse. So, that's fine. This just means we won't. <laughs> what are the odds? Um, that means nothing. Because we didn't... There was no success necessary in order to complete that. So we're good. For the time being. And... Now we draw this green card. And we put it right here. So you stand before a, ne a nearly 50 foot high rock peak. And then we flip it. So basically this is, this is what's going to happen here. Okay. Oh man, the zoom on this thing is real funky. I'm wondering if I can change that. 
because right now that's that's going to be a real pain in the ass let's see properties take a video Oh, that's going to be good. I'll just keep this open so we can control the camera that way. Neato. Okay. Alright, so... We'll have a better, a less ghetto version of this pretty soon, so... Okay, so the view from up there must be quite interesting. Um, so this card now essentially sits here. And what this has done is um, it's added in a um, another action we can take. So in order to succeed at a... Where is it? This looks like a climbing action. Um, uh, move, backtrack. No, that's not it. Oh yeah, climb, right there. Uh, so in order to succeed at the climbing action, um, we need to draw at least one of these cards and get two successes. So if we take a look at ye old manual, uh, the chances of us getting two successes on drawing one card is 6%. But if we draw two cards, we have basically a 45% chance of getting it. So that's good. Numbers are in our favor if we draw two cards. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to attempt to climb this. However, uh, we don't have any real way of... Um... Getting an injury is bad in this game. I'll say that much. <laughs> you don't want to have an injury just like in real life. So we will draw... I think we're going to draw three cards for now. Oh boy. Uh, okay, so. Uh, goody. Okay, so we can, we can make... Look at that. We needed exactly that. We can make two stars. So that's good. So, um... Now we get to pick which of these we want to keep. So we have... Uh, knowledge is power. You get more experience. Take a... Uh, okay. That's basically getting an experience card. Probably don't need that just yet. So we have a scholar here. Um, and uh, this basically says, The following effects apply applies as long as you have this in your hand. So uh, if you take a look at this card here, Essentially, it's a little icon for, um, focus, bitch, there we go, uh, this little icon here, the skill, uh, if you take a look at this, basically, whenever we try to attempt that skill, it, we can do negative one, uh, pull to a minimum of one, and, or get a single star for free, just by having the skill. And that's why these skills are good, because we don't have to try and get this star anymore if we have that skill. So that's actually pretty powerful. And last but not least, we have everyone's favorite, the fire making kit. Um, fire is really useful. It actually makes... Um, it makes a lot of things... It makes food more edible for one, which means that uh, you can return more cards. I believe instead of returning one card, you return a two card for every piece of meat that you use or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. But I think for now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Scholar. So, um, we have a hand size, uh, which is denoted by this scholar thing here 
So we can have a total of five of these cards in our hand at any time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep this uh, to the side here. This is uh, one of our cards for our hand. So go team. The rest of these just get thrown in the discard pile like that. Boom. Nice and easy. We did it. So now we take out the card 26 and we discard this. And discarding means... Uh, it goes into, uh, mm. I think it goes into the past. Let me just double check. Discard, discard, blah, blah. discard, oh, into the discard pile. Uh, discard any item cards no longer associated with the discard. Uh, or the past. Okay. Yeah, I think we put it in the past. But I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure we just put it in the past. Yep. Yep. Let's put it in the past, pretty sure. Okay. Into the past you go. And then we need number 26. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep another deck over here of the past. Um, so that we don't get lost in things. So we need 26. All right, <clears throat> this says, uh, finally, you make it to the top of the rocky peak. The, och the ocean stretches as far as the eye can see in every direction. This volcanic island is only about half a mile long. And from what you have seen, the resources look too scarce for you to survive here more than a few days. Joy. Uh, you notice a path to the south, apparently free of any jets of steam uh consistently looking for an easier means of access you carefully walk back down from the peak banish the terrain card you're standing on and replace it with a 10 card okay so this card here that we're standing on this is the 10 card uh because we managed to scale the rock take a peek um, I believe that this gets banished so ring this out over here where can we put this I'm just gonna put this over on this side you can't see them it's just gonna be in the way otherwise so we'll put that over there just like that uh, what is that icon I mean, it's like a timed icon or something. Man, it's been a while since I played this, I apologize. For not knowing all of the rules, Dave, you suck. A temporary event. The active player must resolve this event, then discard the card into the past or banish it if the card states so. Okay, so this just goes into the past as well. Neato, you know, so that goes over there. And we replace the 10 card. I'm glad I looked that up. Okay. Alright, so gold card um essentially this is a modified version of the same tile but instead it's now different so as you can see we no longer have the action for climbing the peak on the on the side and we open up another uh walking area down here now i don't know if you can see it i'll see if i can focus a little better here the original card um 
Hold on, focus. Okay. The original card had these little footprints down here as well. Uh, I can show you that. Yeah. So th this is the new card here. This is the original card. So he has those little footprints. Generally speaking, um, you can find footprints of like animals and other things like that. And they give you contextual clues about directions you should go in and stuff. Which is why it's important to actually um, do all of this stuff. Now, if you also notice here, um, the cost for moving is now zero. Which is real good. It's real good. Okay, so we need another... Another one of these bad boys to go down here so now you can you can start to see how this works right um, basically everything starts to sort of come together in a giant example of things to come so I think we're gonna now explore this so it costs us nothing to start the exploration which is real good we don't have to do anything so we're just gonna flip it um, and we've got an item. Strange. Normally it's a bad thing. Uh, the spiky conch. You have picked up a large shell you can blow into. It gives us uh, ability to... Uh, when we have the option to do a music symbol, we can do music stuff, or we can use it as a weapon and then get rid of it. So, uh, as you see at the top here, this says we have three uses of this item. So, the way this works... As a single player, this is what our hand will look like, right? So you have your items over here. Where can I put that? I'll put that there. Um, so you have your items, and then you have your hand. Um, and as a single player, we get we get four items, and those four items can have four things, four additional items attached to it. Um, so because this is the first one, if we were to, say, put another item underneath it and attach it to this item, it means that the uses for the item will go up by one, and that item will now uh, allow us to do additional things, like use a weapon more effectively and stuff like that. It's it's weird. It's kind of like MacGyver. They kind of like duct tape items together and shit. Very strange, but don't worry about it. Okay, so we've got that now. Um, so now we need the fourth location. Which reads, Progression in this direction is hampered by many jets of boiling steam. It seems you have to take a steep path to reach the ocean that you can see below. So, this is the, uh, the design of it here. God, this auto-focusing mumbo-jumbo shit is annoying. I'm going to have to get the green screen set up for this. It'll be much, much better, trust me. Um, so, as you can see, uh, we have some a couple of things here. For one, it actually costs quite a bit to move in this space. It's going to cost us two things. Uh, we also have a scouting option, and we have... Uh, like a move investigate thing so but as you can see or maybe you can't really see because it's blurry the map starts to form in a very interesting way so um, it doesn't cost us anything to move uh, because basically we scouted we unveiled this area we don't have to move into it we can if we want to before we move out of this space unveil these two areas and see what we see um, that actually might not be a bad idea generally speaking the way that this works is if you want to move you pay the cost once and then you just sort of move to all unveiled areas so to a degree it kind of pays to unveil the areas but sometimes these things can be quite disastrous I would say so, uh, but let me just double check that rule, because that's how I remember it. <laughs> that's how I remember that happening, so. <sighs> I 
Move. Okay. Uh, okay. Exploring the continent. Okay. Um, there's a random event that hides a portion of the blah, blah, blah. Once the explosion occurs, has been resolved. The number of the blah, blah, blah. That event occurred. If, if the adventurer card is a terrain card, the active player must make sure it fits with the adjacent card, which it does. Um, moving, okay. The other player may take the move action on the visible terrain cards the figure is standing on in order to apply the following consequences, meaning all involved characters move their figure to the same reachable terrain card. A reachable terrain card is one that is connected to the active player's terrain card by an uninterrupted series of terrain cards, no matter how many they are. So you can use... If I have, like, all the way over here unveiled for whatever reason, and I'm here, I can spend the two cards and just sort of whoop, like, teleport all the way over there. So I was right. I remembered correctly. Let's go team. And all this talking is making me thirsty. All the salt water that I'm hearing in my ears is making me thirsty. Okay. So, uh, we're going to unveil this bad boy up here. DJ, flip this shit. Okay. Um, so, I don't know what this is. I've never seen this one before. And I've, I've only played a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, whatever this is. There are... Fuma rolls between you and your destination. You notice that the most numerous ones spurt their gases less frequently. Uh, oh shit. Take a 045 card and apply consequence. A. If you decide to walk on the yellow holes. Or B. If you decide to walk on the white holes. So... <laughs> Should we walk on the white holes or the yellow holes? So, I, hang on. Okay. You notice that the most numerous ones spurt their gases less frequently. Oh, okay. So, this is sort of like a visual puzzle, right? The idea is, is that um, if we, we need to decide if we're walking on the white ones or the yellow ones, and we count them, and... The ones with the most numerous number is the one that we should work walk on the most. Okay. I'm going to count because, you know, I don't want to die. <laughs> okay. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 23 white. Twenty-two yellow. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna take the. So now it says take. Um, God, this fucking zoom. Take a forty-five card and apply the consequence B. If you decide to walk on the white holes. So that's what we'll do. Forty-five. Okay. 45. You pause, watching the pattern of the venting steam. Trying to time your run, you dash towards B. And we decided we're going to go to B because that was the most numerous by my counting. Uh, okay. Hey, okay. So we have B and we have A. So we're not even going to read A because that would be unfair and unfun. So you, you, you dash towards the white ringed holes. The scalding steam does not shoot from the ground again until you are well clear. Take one zero zero three card. Very well. I will do that. Take one zero zero three card. Okay, you must always take a green one before you take a yellow one. Uh, memory from your previous expedition comes to mind. 
Jimmy, the military demolition specialist, kept repeating, if a stupid rock is stopping you, you get rid of it faster with dynamite than a pickaxe. And look at that. We did so well, we got an experience point. Hells to the air. So, experience points. They go in the satchel. Good times. Good times. So, eventually we'll get the opportunity to buy advanced skills, which add more stuff to the discard pile over here. It's good like that. Okay, and this goes, these two things go into the past. So, boom, the past. All right, moving on. We need 007. Uh, further to the north, the terrain slopes steadily down to the water. Okay, uh, let's focus up again. Okay. There's one of those freaky deaky statues. We've also got a, um, exploration point here. We've got a sightseeing point over here. And the movement to go from here is one, so... Did that statue have anything to do with the first thing that we had? Now, now my fucking camera's in the way again. I'm never gonna win. Never gonna win. Alright. Let's take a look here. Yeah, there's no statue there. Like on this little shortcut map thing we had going on. Yeah, there's no... There's no... Oh, but look at that. It's kind of matching up with the little island that we're on. So that's cool. Alright. Um, there's no other... Oh, wait. We need to add... A... We need to add a thingy here. Because that's an explorable area. So before we do anything else, we're going to uh, unveil this bad boy here. Let's see what's up. Sea urchins? Oh, hot damn. I love sea urchins. They're delicious. Uh, okay, so the ground is covered with hundreds of little reddish creatures that look like sea urchins. You'll have to tiptoe through the colony if you want to continue this way. Each character involved in the following action may discard any number of cards with the keyword skill from their hand and or inventory. For each card discarded this way, you get a star during the result step. Alright, so either we succeed or we take what essentially could most likely be a poison card. And because we unveiled it, we have to do it right now, I believe. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So, well, what is that? That is a seesaw, so that's like a balance. Yeah, balance slash jump. Okay. So, so we need to get two stars. And in order to do that, we will need um, to draw three cards. So we should do that. We are burning through a lot of these cards, though. But, you know, that's life. Sometimes you got to do that. Alright, so... No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Hey, look at that. We've got two stars. Cool. Excellent. Look at that. We're, we got three stars, actually. We're real good. Red border action is immediate. Oh, okay. So we don't have to do that right now. But anyone who wants to pass through. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, no, this is an action for exploring, so... I believe you have to solve these immediately, right? So... Oh, well. 
We explored. Doesn't matter. Into the past you go. My my. Alright, so what are we keeping here? Uh, we have rope. Remember, choose one hand card from the discard pile. Add it to your hand. Discard this. Okay. We can do that for free. That's like a skill card. That's kind of cool. Or, everyone's favorite, the woven basket. While this is in your inventory, the item is a part... The item is part of... When this is in your inventory, the item is... It is part of... May contain three additional item cards. So that's real good. But, um... You see... Okay, this is the other thing that I need to explain. Yeah. Um, so this card at the top here. Uh, these things here represent... Um, you need to have readily ready access to um, a feather or a rope or string or something. I don't think that counts as rope, but yeah, um, whatever that is, vines. And if you don't have ready access to it, because if you look at uh, these tiles down here, these little corner icons here represent... Um, what we have readily access to and that only counts for where your character is so since we're here we have ready access to stone um and for everything you don't have ready access to uh it will cost you an additional uh three oh okay in the case of the the leaves if you don't have ready access to that it'll cost you an additional two cards to pull is that right because it's got a negative there. Let's take a look. Wait, what am I looking at that one for? Crafting. I believe it, it means that you have to uh, pull out more cards. I believe that is the case, if I remember correctly. Crafting an item, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the wood is available in this train card. The number of cards to be drawn to craft a raft is therefore five. The cost of the action, minus three wood resources, equals two. Oh! Oh, okay, I'm reading it wrong. No, okay. So... In order to craft this this thing here, basically, um, if you had the leaves, this would only cost you one in order to craft. But if you had the rope, it would cost you two. You just take away from the total that you need. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm a dumb dumb. Forget me. Um, so theoretically speaking, you can craft whenever you want. Uh, it just takes the crafting action, and then you just attempt to make that you know that's pretty much it okay so what are we picking here remember might be interesting but um i think i think we're going to take the woven basket though for sure so that goes in the hand until we can actually make it. And until we make it, um, it's just going to take up a slot. You know, if you remember correctly, we have a total of five possible slots that we can have. So, now that we've made it, you discard it, and then you add 009 there. Uh, the ground is heavy, is totally barren here. In fact, the only vegetation among your surroundings are clamps of red seaweed clinging to the rocks. Plumes of yellowish smoke spurt from the ground from time to time, swirling around a dead seagull. Joy. We might be able to eat that seagull. Uh, hold on, focus. Focus. Okay, there we go. So, 
this goes back to where we were. This goes to a new one and a new one. But this is like in a, a spot. And this one here is like, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? That is search slash examine. Okay. Um, so I believe that is the dead seagull there. Um, we also have what appears to be footprints or something down here. So yay, so we're going to put that there. And our island is coming together, boys. Yes, indeed. Alright. So. We need to add one more explorable zone. Like this. Okay, so now we're completely um, explored out. We can move. Um, I think we move might move up here first. Only hang on, let's just move this over a little bit. Only because. Um, after we've completely searched this area up here, we won't need to search anymore in that area, so... Let's do that. Alright, so moving costs us nothing in this area, so go team. Okay. Uh, Alright. So, searching costs us nothing, and... Uh... So spotting and observing costs us nothing. And the other one is what? Ah, uh, shit. What is that? It's like a map or something? Oh, go see, investigate. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the spot action because that's not going to cost us anything. So zero, zero, eleven. All right, if there is a statue card in the journal satchel, uh, you may apply the following effects. Instead of revealing this card, return it and place in place of it, take the card whose number is equal to 11 plus Okay. Uh... I don't believe so. So this, what what you're sort of seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, is um, the result of the other curses sort of playing around with the uh, what's going on here. So yeah, essentially, essentially, this is like basically we're not on that curse, but when we do play another curse, we could be like, oh shit. Remember that statue that was on that starter island? That was north. We should go there. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I guess we just, we just flip this now, huh? Okay. A little gruesome, but let's see what it says. It says, A man is laying face down among... The rocks. Approaching closer, you notice his clothes are torn and tattered, and his body is swollen and puffy. Parts of the body are mutilated, and the man's skin bulges with what looks like large eggs. Yo. So, I guess to sit right there. Um, we can investigate that whenever we want. That's going to cost us something to do. We decide to do it. Um, hmm. Maybe we should do the 18 first. So in order to investigate, we just need to pull out one of these cards. 
Oh shit, look at that, we got a raft. So raft... It's pretty useful by the looks of it. It gives us the ability to create a shelter and also... Uh, I guess move on the ocean. But in order to build that we need three wood or sinew. We'll just keep that for now. That's pretty cool though. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, okay, so we've done everything here, so let's investigate this corpse. Hello, corpse friend. How are you? It's good to see you. Alright, so we want to search. Yeah, search slash examine. So, draw card from here. Got it. Uh, remember. Okay. Um, I guess we can keep it for now. Remember, we're gonna have one more card before we have to start discarding cards from here when we want to change them out or whatever. So, uh, draw card 031 and return this. Return. I think return means put it back in the box. Put a card back in its place in this original deck. In the adventure deck, sort numbers by green and card, blah blah blah. Okay. Yeah, alright. So, zero, three, one, huh? There's no text on the back of this one. So we, we put this one back in the box. What was that? 11. Alright, uh, let's see here. The waves violently pound the rocks, splashing your face with sea spray. You inch towards the body along the slippery rocks. Train your best not to fall under the water. Okay. Uh, we need a balance check here. Do we have anything that can help us with balance? What does a scholar skill do? No. Okay. Um, you manage to keep your balance. Take a 032 card from the emergency deck if available. Discard this and replace it with a 139 card. Uh, okay. So, we don't want to fucking die. So that'd be fun. So, what I think we'll do is we will draw... We need three stars. Shit, dude. That's a lot of stars, man. Man, that's a lot of stars. Alright. If we want three stars, we draw four cards, we'll have a 65% chance of getting it. I like those odds. 65%. So, drawing four cards. Man, we're burning through these fucking cards, I tell you what. Alright, so... Two, three, four... Okay. Let's flip them. Okay, so... Are you fucking kidding me? We only got two stars. <laughs> we only got two stars. Oh, ain't that a kick in the dick? Okay. So. I think we don't get to keep anything if we fail. But let's just confirm that. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, okay. 
total success you're getting countless successes the four gold stars you may freely combine any half stars visible on the revealed card as long as both of the cards are facing the same way in order to construct four cards so I guess if one's facing right and the other one's facing right you can't combine them to be left as long as both their cards are facing the same way oh okay so that means like you can't like you know throw one upside down and put it like that okay no I get you each player involved in the action may apply the effects of one or more cards from the hand okay mm -hmm. uh, if the active player obtains at least as many sets as required the action okay so you, you do get to keep something okay that's good so we can keep one of these study the notes uh, how about taking a few moments to study the notes that you and your companions took during your previous expedition? Um, find some interesting information. Hmm. That might be interesting. I think zero five zero might be like a special skill, but zero zero three. If we take a look at um, the experience point, yeah, zero zero three is an experience point. I don't know what zero five zero is, so that's interesting. Snowshoes, eh? Could be good. I don't know. A torch, useful for starting a fire has four uses but you need a fire in order to start the fire or you don't uh, and war paint uh, stealth and ranged and a normal attacks mm. I think we'll take study the notes one two three four five hey we full boys we hella full Okay, all right. Um, so we failed. <laughs> we draw four cards and we failed. Oh, fuck me. Okay. So, uh, the wave breaks over the embankment, knocking you down and drenching you to the bone. Each involved character takes a one zero two card. Ah. Uh. There might be fatigue or something. All right, so uh, this is an injury card. Um, what action did you draw the raft for? Uh, we drew that for investigating the thingy up here, I believe. Yes. Oh, wait. Did we pull that? No, we didn't do that yet. No, 0018. Wait, did we do that? Fuck. I don't remember if we pulled that out or not. That's a good point. I remember we looked. And then we didn't pull it out. Fuck, I'm an idiot. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll do it after this. Thank you for reminding me. Um. Anyway, we're freezing now. Oh. I just kicked my camera. I did. No. No. Cameras, man. All right. So, uh, it is so cold. Your hands and feet are starting to go numb. You need to find a heat source soon, or you'll be in danger of hypothermia. Uh, what does that icon mean? Play must discard one card from the top of the action deck for each red hand they have in their hand. Now, if I remember correctly, the 
basic card also has that. Yes, the basic card has it. So that means, um, does this count? I can't remember if this counts or not. I don't remember the order here. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but let me just double check. Okay, state. When a player reveals a state card, if the X icon can be seen on it, they must immediately discard as many cards from the top of the action deck as they have character state cards in their hand. This effect. Okay. Players then add this card to their hand. Okay, so it doesn't count the card that you just pulled. So you add it to your hand after you have shit the bed. So that's good. Makes me happy. This doesn't count towards your hand size, by the way. So we need to get rid of one. Ah, uh, man. Alright, we, we just tossed away a skill card. We're not even going to bother reading it, because that would be silly. Alright. Uh, so I guess this stays here. This doesn't change. We just have to attempt it again at some other point. Anyway, we should pull out... Was that? 18. Okay. Yeah, we definitely didn't do that. You reach the northern end of the island. You have no idea how much time it would take you to reach an area with more abundant resources. One thing is for certain. If you stay on this barren slab of rock, you are bound to starve. Oh, interesting. Uh, the many recesses. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna read it. Uh, the many recesses around the island would surely wreck any craft trying to approach or leave. However, you might be able to swim through them. The sea is calm right now, but this is not a time to be reckless. So. I guess the, uh, this is like a, like just a, an, a card that sits on top here. So, um, the water is frigid and you eventually can no longer bear it. You decide, okay, if we fail this, which is boating action, uh, we have the, uh, we have the raft, but we haven't built it yet. Swim slash sail. Yes. And we will draw three cards, and we have to get two successes. Um, if we fail it, we take another freezing card, which is not fun. So let's take a look at this raft. There he is. Hello, raft. Good to see you. Oh, if we had the raft, it would just auto success. But we still need to... Um, So we need to build this first. It'll take five, sorry. It'll take five cards in order to build this. Um, because we don't have access to any wood or uh, sinew. And we have succeeding, basically this would give us two stars and one, I guess, wild star. I guess you'd call it the one of the seven in it. Um, I don't know, man. So, in total, if we did that, we would be drawing nine cards in total. But if we did do it, the idea that we'd have to explore these other areas would be frustrating, to say the least. Mm. Okay, so... Something to think about, at least, anyways. Oh my god, I'm already running out of fucking room. Uh... So the maximum cards we can have here is four up. Wow. Like 
exciting. Uh, okay. Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do. I, I, I kind of want to attempt the sale off. <laughs> um, but why don't we try this study the notes thing here? So, we have these two skills here. We have study the notes, and we have scholar. And scholar, because this is like the, got the note icon here, and it has it here, we can actually get negative one off the top and negative one star. We could try that. I mean, that'd be fun. It'd be interesting. Let's do that. Alright, so... I just want to make sure that that symbol... Okay. Players must draw the exact number of cards indicated by the action, which is what this uh, little um, padlock here represents, um, unless they choose to apply card effects from their hand and or inventories, which we are doing with this bad boy. So, we only have to draw one card. Which is real fucking peachy, as far as I'm concerned. Because we're going to be drawing a million cards. Oh. If only we had wood here or something. We build this fucking raft and GTFO. Alright, let's draw. Uh, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Hey, alright. We succeeded. But what is this? Whenever you are able to use the effect of a card with the keyword botany, you may take the following action. Each involved character may shuffle any number of cards from their hand into the action deck. Oh shit, boys. That's actually awesome. That is actually awesome. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, what is the... I just want to work something out because we drew this card and we want to keep it, but we're at a maximum hand size, but this card here says to discard it, so I'm wondering which one of these actually resolves first. Let's find out. With the manual. Okay, so, the step-by-step -step action is, an action is resolved by the following sequence. Uh, okay. You select the item you want to use, if you want to use it, which, you know, it's fine. The cost. Um, determine the cost. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Each player involved in the action may apply the effects of one or more cards in their hand. Uh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. During step one. Okay, so we use the item. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Result. Now the play reveals the cards, okay? Uh, may uh, apply the effects of one or more cards from their hand. Okay. Skill. The active player may choose one skill card from those revealed uh, during step three. They may add the card to their hand or to the hand of another player involved in the action. Even if the card exceeds the hand size limit. Interesting. And then you discard. Discard all other... Uh, okay, drawn in step 2 to discard power. Discard any items that are no longer... Have die associated with them. Um, okay. Okay, consequences. Then you do the consequences of the action. 
And then you affect the hand size. Okay, so yes. We will we will be discarding this before we discard this, which means that we can not change our hand size. Go team. Okay. Alright, so uh take zero five zero and zero zero three. Let's start with zero zero three. Because we know what that is. That is some sweet delicious experience points what's this one say an experience from one of your previous expeditions comes to mind daniel m the team's anthropologist taught you that prehistoric man's wisdom teeth were designed to replace their molars as they were eroded by the intense chewing of raw meat fucking nasty but good on them i guess so we get one more experience point hell yeah Let's add that to the sweet inventory. I really like this book. This book is fucking neat. Compared to how it used to look. Yeah. Looks so much better. Alright. Okay. So now we get 0 to 5 zero. Oh, there's a shitload of zero five zeros here. Okay. We just pick one at random, I guess. This one. What do we get? History of the continent. Okay. That doesn't really give us much outside of like being a story thing, I guess. So what, we worship the snake people? Neat, I guess. We'll add this to the discovery page. And we might leave a couple of tabs here for more experience points. Because we've got a whole book we could fill up. Makes me kind of giddy thinking about that, actually. <laughs> Cool. In the book you go. Uh, okay. So that, the study of the notes, goes in the bin. That's a good way of getting experience points then. Okay. So. We still haven't got any cards that say botany on them. <laughs> which is a little frustrating. To say the least. Okay, so... What do we want to do here? Do we want to attempt laid down for a headache hour and a half later? Welcome back, Raggles. Um, do we want to attempt to escape you out of out of this island, or do we want to stay here and try and get more resources? The card did say at the very beginning that we wouldn't have a lot of resources here, and I know for a fact that food is far more abundant on the next island um we still have quite a lot of this disc uh, action pile left but yeah i don't know and we're freezing we, we're getting hypothermia so i don't know i don't know i'm not sure honestly I'm kind of tempted to just build the raft and fuck right off, you know? That's just me, though. That's just me. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's build the raft. I've thought about it. We're building this fucking raft. Oh shit. We've got this. This remember card. What do we have in the discard pile that we can get back? Um, okay, no. Maybe we have something here that can help us. 
Uh huh. No, it's just power. Fire. Ooh. I have the fire making kit. That's interesting. We have this little bad boy we can take out. Uh, come on, auto focus, please. Yeah. So we can. But we don't have any food to cook, so it kind of would be a little pointless. Uh, we could do another study the notes thing. That'd be interesting. Nah, let's just build this raft. Let's just build the raft, man. Alright, so we need five we need to draw five cards. Because we don't have any resources. So let us do that. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's only four. Five. Okay. So, we've built a raft. What did we get? Lucky star. Think. Randomly take up to seven cards from the action deck. You may add one hand card from shuffle the uh, okay, whatever. Learn by doing discard this during the okay. Bowlers. One use item for hunting. Bad look at all those stars, man. That's a lot of stars. It costs two to make. You can use it once. But the thing about this, if I if I put this and I put it inside of the woven basket, all of a sudden it gets two uses instead of one. Neat. Um and we got a curse card. Okay, so what do we want to keep here? Is there anything good in there at all? I mean, we would have to discard something to keep something from here. I don't know. I think we're good. I think we just... Oh no, we have we have a free thing. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to take the bowlers. Because the raft is now built. So when you build something... Um, when you build something... It goes from your hand, which is still at 5... So, one, two, three, four, five. And you basically build another item. Now, we have a choice here. Uh, we could add it to the spicy conch and make a, a floating spicy conch. Don't ask me. That's just how it fucking works in this game. Or we can build an entirely new item cool item called the raft which would be separate from everything now i just want to make sure because i'm not entirely sure here if crafting adds adds um durability to a thing i think it has to have the same keywords if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, crafting an item. Here we go. Combining an item. When an item card is found or crafted, the player may combine it with an existing item in their inventory in order to form a single item without exceeding the allowed stacking limit. It depends on the player size count, blah, blah, blah. The newly combined item is placed at the bottom of the column it is added to in the last position, making sure that the lower part of the card remains visible. Sure. If a newly combined item shares at least one keyword, with the item card the die is resting on at the top of the column, its durability value is added to the value of that die. Maximum of six. Okay. So, if hypothetically, 
It doesn't, but if hypothetically our raft had either tag aggressiveness or music, because that's what the conch has, we could add four durability to this for a total of, well, maximum of six. So we would be losing three durability, but we're not going to do that because we good boys and good boys don't make bad decisions. So that's going to be a four dog. All right. So now we're swimming. Okay. So because we have a sweet dude with a boat. And we made that boat out of fuck knows what. We can do it. Okay, so the staircase icon on this little dude over here represents that this action cannot be taken unless all characters are involved. So if we had two characters, because you can split the party, you can sort of explore with a second character, do whatever you want. Um, if we did do that, then what that would mean is um, we would have to have everyone on the same space in order to do the same action in order to leave. So, all right, let us start the process of leaving. So we need, as the card stipulates, um, yeah. Okay, we need to draw three cards and have two successes. But with the raft being that we get two automatic successes, we only need to draw the minimum amount of cards needed to succeed because that's how we roll. So the first thing's first. The, the, the card here has four uses, so what we're going to do, because we're using the, the raft one time, we're going to reduce the durability down to three from four, and then we are going to draw the required three cards necessary. Two, three. Oh man, we fucking crushed it. But... Well, shit, look at this. We got rudimentary flint. Uh, this is good. This is, this is, this is a good card. Only because it, it's like basically a fire making kit on steroids. I believe. Uh, put a fire figure into play on your terrain card to scout this. Uh, does a fire making kit last longer? No. Except it costs more to do that. Um, but we can make this for free if we're on a space with a stone. Um, but, you know, we've already succeeded launching the, the, ve the, ve the water vehicle, the raft. So we're not going to be able to do that because the following things happen. So, uh, this card, this game tells us to draw card 25 on a success, which it is for us. That's real good. However, because we have a raft, um, as you can see here, the raft has this little, little blue man here, which means that you add five to the total of the card that you're tele that you're moving to. In this case, you would be zero three zero instead of zero twenty five, and that'll put us in a different location once we start, which is. A really unique mechanic, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, only if it's matching the banner? Good call. Good call. Let me just check that, though. 
to get the official ruling because sometimes as much as I love you chat, uh, sometimes you're a bit basic and you don't know your ass from your face, but that's okay. We will verify inside of the rule book. But good call. Okay. Uh, if the number box is okay, consequences of actions, blah blah blah. And you take the number card as consequences of action, and blah blah blah. If one is several more, blah blah blah. Okay. Um, if a number box is associated with a banner, when a num box it's called num box here instead of a number box comes with a banner blue or purple, uh, the active player may take may either take a card matching the number of the num box or take a card whose number is equal to the number of the num box plus the number associated with the pictograph in the banner. Provided one involved character is using an item by lowering its durability or a quest item showing this pictograph and the associated number. If you didn't understand that, don't worry. I didn't understand it either. So let's take a look at the example. Bruno takes a swim slash sail action, the consequences of which is to take a 159 card with... A banner. You're all right. See, it says it right there. Um, let me just fucking refocus this shit. I have to do it manually. Okay. 159 with the banner. Since Bruno has a raft in his inventory and it shows the banner plus five, he may either take a 159 card or 164. So this card right here, as you can see, it just has the sail slash swim icon. It doesn't have anything else. So we are only taking the 025. Chat, you are not basic. You can in fact tell the difference between your face and your ass. I apologize. Thank you for pointing out my error in the ruling. So we are going to take the 025. Which I believe takes us off this island. This godforsaken hellhole. And puts us on to da 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 zero twenty five. Hot damn! There's a, there's more of this stuff to go through. Okay, this is why the banner doesn't come into play. Good call. Okay, so this is a action, a timed event. After swimming out a couple of hundred feet, you notice a particularly worrying fin crest above the waterline. Almost immediately, it turns and begins to rush towards you. Sprint back. What? I was fucking using a boat. Dog. Are you kidding me? Trying to plot me like this? That's the red outline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold up. We actually have an injury. Um, yes. An action. Uh, the red outline means an action that all involved characters and only them must take. Okay. Fun. <laughs> so... We need to go back to the island. I thought we were leaving. I thought we were leaving. I guess not. Alright, so. Uh, fuck me. That was a bad decision. We might be dead. No, we're not dead. We're definitely not going to die, but. Oh, shit. Actually, yes, we might actually die here. Because <laughs> uh, if we fail... Actually, I'll read it out when we fail. <laughs> okay. Fucking hell, man. Alright, okay, so... Alright. 
we need to draw two cards and have four successes. So. Oh, yeah. We need to... We decided we're going to keep this flint, right? So we're going to get rid of something. Let's get rid of this remember real quick first. Um, it's because we only have five cards in there. So makes sense. All right. So now we have to do this. Good fucking god. All right. This is a this is just a terrible decision. I don't know why we decided. I thought we'd be safe on a raft. Guess not. So Okay. We are going to draw how many cards in order to get four successes. It's like nine cards, bro. Ugh. At five cards, we have a 55% chance of drawing four successes. Fuck me. And we can't use uh, sailing or swimming because we're injured, boy. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Nothing can help us from our inventory. So let's just do it. Let's draw five cards. Stupid use of cards. Three, four, five. At least we have the raft. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Here we go. Five cards. No whammies. Oh. Oh, no. We got this. Look. Look at all those stuff. Get that shit out of here, curse. Get that shit out of here. We good. We good. Oh, yeah. No, we good. We got how many successes here? Look at that. Five fucking successes. Boys. Didn't die. Ah. Well, no. Uh, specifically, this card here says... Or... If you are injured, do the other thing. So, you know. Unless I'm reading that as, like... It's not a separate act. Hang on. Because... That's it's it's a weird wording sometimes it's like that, but you, I'm taking that as you can do this one, or you can do this one, and this one doesn't have a skill associated with it because bitch you injured, so that's how I'm reading that at least anyway. So uh, it probably means that I could still use the boating, but it just takes more successes to get to that point, so. Probably because it is one action or whatever. Anyway, you reach the shore in the nick of time. Each character draws a 103 card. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, but first, let's take a look at what we got. We got Friction Fire. Which is the exact same thing as the Fire Kit. We got a big old club. That's pretty cool. We got a woven cord, which is exactly the same as the other one that we've got, so we don't need that. And we got forewarned is forearmed. Discard this during the result step of an action you were involved in in order to apply the following effect, which is basically just a single bonus star. That just changes the cost, not the type of action. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I mean, the end result of this is I used, what, three more cards? But I get to keep my raft longer, so that's fun. Mm. All right. We've got a big old batch of shit right now. Hmm, what do we want to keep here? I think we'll keep the club. We don't really have a weapon, so the club would be good. And 
we can get rid of these like this and we get rid of the bowlers as well because we have to get rid of something this has more uses than the bowlers which can only be used once so swiggity okay Whew. Man, what a fucking nightmare that was. Never again. Oh, uh, what else did we need? We need a 103 card. It's probably an injury. You know. Because it's in the one early 100s. 103. <clears throat> Your heart jumps at even the faintest suspicious sounds. Anxiety mounts. And the constant danger has you fearing for your life. More than ever. You are frightened. Okay. Joy. <laughs> um. Mm. We can get rid of this with a mental thing, though, so. But that's going to take actions to do that. Oh, and it, um, just so everyone knows, it didn't have the little... Uh, discard card thing, so we're good for now. For now. Oh, man. Mentally draining. <laughs> I really wish I didn't fucking go swimming. <laughs> what a shit. I don't know what these were. Let's just discard them, though. What a fucking shit. Alright. Let's try this dead body again while we're here. Then we can never come back to this garbage point. Just fucking get rid of it. Alright, so... We need to... Draw three stars. 65% chance if we draw four cards. And we are going through these cards so quickly. Okay, one, two, three, four. Four cards. Okay, one success. Two success. How much do we need? We need three successes. Three successes. Look at that. We are on a roll. We got. Four successes. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so what did we get? Uh, okay. More experience. A uh, deadfall trap, which is hunting or survival, I guess. Resting. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. Remember... Uh, and a walking stick. Oh, shit. Yo, the walking stick is dope. Look at this. This is good. This is, this is a good item. So, in case you don't realize what we just picked up, the walking stick has four uses. And it removes two drawers from... The movement stuff, the movement penalties, that's really good. It's also a weapon, which you can also remove two from it as well. Basically removes the difficulty that we'll have moving around. I think we're going to take the walking stick. But what do we replace? As we have too many objects in our hand. Do we need all these skills? Each involved character may shuffle any number of cards from their hand into the action deck. That seems really good, though. That seems really good. Uh, we don't have any will skills.
Hmm. We can make the rudimentary flint for free. Not on this space, though. So we want to keep that. The club would be nice to keep. The woven basket. I want to keep that as much as I can, but... We have to get rid of something. Uh, what a shit. Uh, we'll get rid of the woven basket for now. No more items until we build something. When we move here, or anywhere we're moving, we'll probably move here next, I don't know. Or, no, here. We'll probably go here. Only because, only because it has stone and a dead seagull, which we'll probably eat, I think. You can make the conch bludgeon. I mean, we already have that, so it's true, but it's like, we discard the whole item by doing it. I don't know what the music does, though, so... I've never, never seen a use for music at all in this game. Uh, okay, so we managed to succeed. You take a 0-3-2 card from the adventure deck. If available, discard this and replace it with a 139. So 0-3-2. Okay, it is available. Uh, now that the danger has passed, you search the body, wasting no time. A metal gear wheel. Uh, it's one on the, found on the body of a naval officer. Neat. I think this is a quest item by the looks of things, because it has that little dooter up the top there. So... Into the manual you go. Where should we put him? Probably next to this guy. Neat. Look at that. Fancy. Okay. Well, that's good. And discard this card and replace it with a 139 card. Seven. Seven, seven, seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, judging from the insignias on his jacket, this man was once a French naval officer. Despite being worn and faded, you can still make out a name. FT-16 La Rochelle, probably a ship to which the man was assigned. Unfortunately, there is nothing else worthwhile on him. Hold up. Hold up. Huh. Okay. Uh, this is kind of interesting. So the map has FT-16 right there. You see that? Little island there? Yeah, FT-16. So does this card. <laughs> fancy. Fancy, fancy. It's almost like they planned it. Or some shit. What are the odds? Alright. So. Fully explored this area. Uh. Man. How long have I been streaming for? Shit. 2 hours and 30 minutes already. Holy fuck. And we haven't even explored 5 tiles yet. <laughs> man. Uh, we've gone through, we've gone through this many cards <laughs> at the action deck. We're going to have to do something about that, I think. Um, but for now, I think, 
I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wind up there, but mostly because it's like one a.m. for me, and I got work tomorrow morning. So, uh, so what we're gonna do right now is we're going to save the game. Hell yeah! Okay, so saving in this game is actually kind of interesting, um, because what it does is it saves. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Before we do that. We probably want to move ourselves into a better location. Because we've already fully explored this. Because I'm pretty sure... And let me just check the save rules. Because I'm pretty sure this turns into, like, um... It turns into, like, a, um... Fog of War again. Saving the game. Okay, players may suspend and save the game at any time, as long as the characters' figurines are on the same terrain card and no player is performing an action or is forced to take a mandatory action. Discard all the cards on the board into the past except for the terrain card and all figures are standing on. Okay. So yes. We should move our character into a space we want to be before that happens. So, in order to move, we need to draw one more card. He's going to discard them. I don't know why they're not sitting there. Wow, look at this. Three fucking stars on this one. You may discard this card during... Okay. Shit. Well, we'll just put that over there. So, where do we want to move? Uh, we can move here, we can move here, um, I kind of want to move, hmm, Let's move here. I want to move to this one. So we're going to just boop, move our tile there. All right. Now we go into saving. So saving the game. Okay. Discard all the cards on the board into the past, except for the terrain card, all the characters, figures they're currently standing on. Okay. So we take these, we'll take these and we'll put these back in the box. Because they have yet to be unveiled. Alright. Um, and then we discard all of these into the past. Which is over here. Uh, yeah, we should put this back. Uh, next step, uh, stack the remaining cards in the following order from the bottom up, put them on this, put them behind the save divider in the box. For each character, here's a whole card with the following cards underneath. Okay. All, uh, green, uh, all blue, then green. Okay, so these are the blue ones. The blue. Uh, okay, the durability. Okay, so then we take the raft. Um, hold up. Okay, so we take the raft. And we do that. Then we take the conch, do that. Now, the way that you tell um, how much your ability has got left, it's the number that's facing upwards. So in the case of this one, this raft has three durability left over. So 
Nice and easy. Uh, yes, that makes sense to me. Like that. Okay. And then you put the injury cards on top of that. Yes. Okay, so then it goes like this. Boom. And then on top of that, um, Oh, okay, that's weird. Huh. Did I do that right? No, I think I did that wrong. So how do you... Okay, so maybe it's like... Flipped like this. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you just put the durability cards before that, so... I guess that makes sense. I guess that's how they've got it in the book, so... Uh, okay, the discard pile, save card. Okay. Discard pile. Okay, so yeah, then the discard pile goes on the next. And after that, you have the action deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. Underneath it. Okay, so I had it right the first time. Yep, yeah, okay. So you do flip it the other way around. How annoying. So it is like that, and then these flip upside down. Okay. Good, good, good. Action deck is on top next. Like so. And then the terrain card on top. Like this. Okay, and that's how you save the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'm not sure when we'll be back for another one, but I want to be back fairly soon. It'd be pretty cool to have something like that. So, yeah. Thanks, I guess. Have a good one. Bye-bye.